Methodist Church. We're so glad you're here, whether you're in the sanctuary or uh, worshiping with us somewhere else at home or in another place. Uh, we're, we're glad to be here on this beautiful, crisp morning. Uh, I'm Sue Jones, and I'll be your lay reader this morning. And uh, let's see, I ask, uh, let's all join together in the welcome that's printed in your bulletin as people of God, we will welcome each other through this. You are welcoming you. No matter where you have been, no matter what you have done or left undone, you are welcome in love and grace. May you find rest and renewal. May you find hope and peace. This is what God offers to us all. And I do have a few announcements to make before we begin our time of worship. Um, all Saints Sunday is November 1st. We will remember those from Cashers UMC that have entered the church triumphant since last year. If you would like a name read of a person dear to you that has also entered the church triumphant since last year, please write it or type it clearly for Jan and send it to her at cumc secretary one at gmail.com or call her here at the church office, 743-5298, or you can leave it on, your, on her desk if you're here and uh, want to do that on your way out. Cashers UMC is in the planning phase of creating a once-weekly after-school tutoring program for elementary-age kids from Blue Ridge School. If you're interested in providing homework help tutoring, providing snacks for the kids, or are willing to drive the church bus to pick the kids up after school once a week, uh, please let Pastor Aaron know, is that correct? No, okay. Uh, or Jane. Also, it will be necessary as a reminder to RSVP weekly with Jan at the email address I just gave, CUMC secretary1 at gmail.com or call her at the church office by no later than noon on Thursday before the upcoming Sunday service. For next Sunday, October 25th, please RSVP to Jan to sign up for the 1030 service to be held in the sanctuary. If you're not attending our service in person, please feel free to join us on Facebook or YouTube. Our service worship guide for the applicable service date will be sent to you via email and is also available on our website. October is Pastor Appreciation Month. Remember to show your appreciation to Pastor Erin for all she does for us. If you have not already received your 2021 stewardship materials with your third quarter statements, they should arrive soon. Your generosity over the years has afforded CUMC the opportunity to support many outreach and mission projects, in addition to repairs to the church facility and the administrative cost. Please prayerfully consider how you will respond to God's call to support CUMC through your financial gifts, as well as through your gifts of time and talent. Together, we can help support and grow the kingdom of God. And lastly, Cashers United Methodist Month to Help at the Fishes and Loaves Food Pantry is November. So we hope you will sign up on the sheet in the hallway at the bulletin board um, in the hallway. And um, you can either do this after church or just stop by and do that or call Jan. And now, if you will stand to, uh, to join me in the call to worship as we prepare our hearts to worship God. Shout with joy to God, all the earth. Remember that God is the only God, 
the one who made us, the one who sustains us, the one whose spirit lives within us. Let us enter God's house with thanksgiving and come into God's presence with praise. For God is good with unfailing love that lasts forever and faithfulness that extends to all generations. Please be seated and we will now prepare our hearts for worship this hour. At this time, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Holy God, you are indeed holy. You have created this world that we live in. You created us in our mother's wombs. You knit us and made us. 
in your image. We worship you out of awe, out of praise, out of thanksgiving. Knowing that our blessings are infinite, and outnumber the grains of sand on the shore. Lord, we're grateful for this day, grateful for each person who is worshiping with us in whatever form or fashion. Grateful for family and friends, for help, for a place that we can come together to grow in our faith and grow in our walk with you. Lord, we know that our gratitude, our thankfulness comes not only when things are well, but even when things are not. And Lord, we specifically this morning lift up to you those who are sick, who are grieving. Lord, we can't go a day without remembering all those lives that have been affected by this pandemic world we are in. We pray for each and every life that has been lost the family and friends that have been left behind, for their memory, for the fortitude and courage to step forward and to surrender their life to you, trusting in your eternal grace. And Lord, we especially this morning lift up one of our own. We pray for the family of Creshel Harrison. We are grateful for his 93 years on earth and the nearly 65 years he and Mary Ann were married. We are grateful for his witness, for his life. Grateful that you shared him with us. And Lord, we pray this morning for those who are still sick, who continue to suffer and struggle. Lord, we specifically pray for Deborah Becton, Amanda Brookshire, Donna Browning, Vanna Cameron, Gary Chambers, Dale Coward, Marsha Lynn Deal, Dana Demetanova, David Griffith, Jack Housel, Delia Neely, Larry Pruitt, Ali Shalil, Julie Schumpert. Lord, each one of these needs your healing in a unique and special way. You know the places in their bodies, the places in their hearts, the places in their minds that need your strength, your presence, and your peace. Lord, we pray that whatever circumstance they and we find ourselves in, that above all else, we would know and trust you as we give thanks in all circumstances of life. Trusting ourselves and our world to your care. Lord, all this we ask in your holy name as we pray together our family's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. morning comes from Psalm 100, a beautiful psalm of praise to our Lord. Hear these words. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When I read this passage for this week, um, a hymn came to mind, and I know we're not singing right now, but I wanted to share this hymn with you all. It's new-ish. It's as old as I am, but in the world of hymn writing, 1978 is not that old. It's in our faith we see, so the little blue supplemental hymnal that we use sometimes, and here are the words. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his Son. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. We know that we're supposed to give thanks to God. 
Our scripture today is one of 200 instances in scripture where we are called to thank God. Well, this week during my story time with our Mother's Morning Out kiddos, we sang a song and talked about all the things we have to give thanks for. And the longer we sang, the longer our list got, and it became really clear that our list of reasons to give thanks to God is infinite. So why is it so hard to have within us this attitude of gratitude? Maybe you look at your own life, you look at this world that we live in, and maybe you're complaining a little bit because it's cold in here. But... <coughs> Then the anger and 
and frustration often kick in because we forget from whom our gifts come. We claim credit for how wonderful our life is and blame others for how horrible it is. We forget our own brokenness and we forget that everyone else is broken too. Thanksgiving is a spiritual discipline. It is something we have to work at, to do, to be intentional about. It's a discipline of remembrance, a discipline of looking at our challenges and our imperfections and be reminded to look not through our own understanding and our strength, but to God. We give thanks because we are broken. From broken families, a broken nation, a broken world. And we know that it is only by the grace of God that we make it through. That we have the opportunity to do better today than yesterday. With the assurance that we have the forgiveness of Christ when we don't measure up. God has gifted us beyond measure. Even that imperfect state creates in us a desire for more. To create a world and a church and a family that is better than what it is. Paul tells us in Romans 5 that we should give thanks for all things, including our suffering, because suffering produces endurance, endurance character, and character produces hope that does not disappear. And that hope is Christ himself. We know and trust that even when everything else falls apart, we can still give thanks because we have been given the greatest gift of all in Christ Jesus. We know that everything in this world is temporary. Everything will pass away. But we will still have a gift of new life in Christ. One of the first songs I taught the morning, Mother's Morning Now kids was, he's got the whole world in his hands. And we can rest assured that that not only is our planet and the universe, but each and every one of us is secured in the hands of God. And God holds not just today, but yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We can believe in a love that is greater than any moment in time, any circumstance or person. Because Jesus personally and intimately relates to us in our suffering. So maybe the question is, how do we show gratitude? How do we show appreciation to God? Well, how many of you have ever heard of Gary Chapman and the five love languages? Yep, there's a few of you nodding. Well, Gary Chapman says that we show our love in typically one of five ways. Quality time, acts of service, words of affirmation, gift giving, and touch. Think about our life. Think about our worship, our devotion time, those things that we do to connect with God. These five ways are the ways that we 
we receive God's love, and it's also the way we reciprocate that love and gratitude. Every moment we spend in scripture, in prayer, in worship, is time well spent with God. And God craves quality time with you. When we give our financial gifts to the church, when we serve in God's name, like when we serve at Fishes and Loaves in a couple of weeks, when we send cards and call and visit the lonely, when we share words of encouragement, when we read God's love letter to us, when we tell people about Jesus, these are all the ways that we show our thanks to God. God's act of service through Jesus is the ultimate act of love and service as God poured himself out into human flesh into the life of Jesus and as we see Jesus crucified God and resurrected the gift of the Holy Spirit is God's continual gift and reassurance that life goes on But despite this infinite number of reasons to give thanks and the, all the ways that God shows God's love toward us, having this attitude of gratitude is not easy. It requires focusing more on what we have and less on what's lacking. And putting words of thanksgiving and actions of thanksgiving into our daily routine. But when we do, this attitude of gratitude will fill us to overflowing with peace and joy. A sense of gratitude that surpasses all circumstances. And it's more contagious than COVID. When we fill our lives with this, it is impossible for the world to see us and not know that there's a difference. So our challenge this week is to spend time every single day giving thanks to God. Write it down. Pray it, sing it, whatever brings you joy and fills you with God's presence. And I guarantee this time next week, your heart will be different and your life will be more full. May it be so through us. Praise be to God. So this is your chance. This is your moment to verbalize your words of thanksgiving. If you're joining us online this morning, I invite you to type it into the chat. Just share your words of gratitude to God for something. Are there things that you would like to share? I'm thankful that God answers prayers three different ways. Yes, not yet, but I have something better in mind. Absolutely. Absolutely, George. Thank God. But he answers them all. God answers prayers. Yes, not yet, and I've got something better. I love that, George. Thank you. I'm thankful for these beautiful October Yes, absolutely. So grateful for cool fall weather. Yes. I'm grateful that we had family come to visit this past week. Thank you.
thank God for family, absolutely. And we're very grateful we got to go see Gracie in Greensboro yesterday. And I was, we miss her a lot. Are there others? Give thank God for. Lee's birthday. Yes. Thank God for birthdays. Today is Lee's birthday. <coughs> absolutely. Thank God for the fellowship of this church and this community. Absolutely. Thank God for the fellowship of this church and this community.